All right. On this system of equations, we're going to solve using an augmented matrix once again, except for notice in this system we have fractions, which isn't a problem. Uh, but let's address some of these fractions, okay? That's a 1 half x, 1 fourth y, and that's a 1x right there, okay? So when we place those values in our matrix, we'll have to show that they are the fractions 1 half, 1 fourth. And then, of course, we have this coefficient, which is a phantom one, meaning it does, doesn't show most of the time. All right, so here is our augmented matrix. Notice we have a column for the x's, the y's, and the answers here. So what we'll want to do is address the fractions in each row. So this is our first row, that's our second row. And just multiply by a common multiple that would uh, is that can get rid of the denominators there. So for example in row 1 if I multiply this by 4 Notice what this does is it gets rid of all the fractions. And that gives us this new row 1 in red. Likewise with row 2, if I multiply these by 4, then it gets rid of that 3 fourths as well. 4 times 1 is the 4. 4 times 3 fourths is 3. 4 times negative 4 is negative 16. And this is our newly created augmented matrix, which we can now work with in order to uh, solve for x and y. So what I need is a 0 where the 4 and 1 are, and I need a 1 where the 2 and 3 are, and whatever it equals here will be our answer. So I'm going to go ahead and use essentially the process of elimination in order to get a 0 where the 4 is. So what I want to do is for the second row, okay, so I'm going to work on the second row. If I take row 1 and multiply it by 2, then I would have the same coefficients, but I want them to be opposites, so I'm going to take the opposite of row 1 times 2, and then if I add that to row 2, then I will get the 0 where I want it. Let's take a look at what happens there. So notice in this new matrix, we still have the top row, which stays the same. But if I take negative 2 times row 1, uh, in this first column, that would give me negative 4. Then I'll add that to this 4, which is now 0. In the second column, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Then if I add that to 3, I get 1. And that actually is where we want that 1 anyways. Likewise with the answers, negative 2 times negative 3 is a positive 6 plus the negative 16. That would give me a negative 10. Right away, this, this second row tells me that y is negative 10 because we've eliminated the x. Now, if you wanted to combine strategies, you could go back to one of the two equations here, replace y with negative 10, and then solve for x. And you can do that if you want, but just to stay with the theme of matrices, we're going to work with this one in order to solve for x. Now remember, we want a 0 where this red 1 is. Okay, so looking at this matrix, the second row doesn't change. And we are going to work on row 1, but with a comparison of row 2. Alright, so notice, uh, the y coefficients are already the same. All I need to do is make them opposite. So I'll take the opposite of row 2 and just add it to row 1, which should give me a 0 right here. So let's check. If I take the opposite of 0 and add it to 2 here, then I get 2. If I take the opposite of 1, that's negative 1, and add it to this, this one, I do get the 0 right where I wanted it. Now if I take the opposite of negative 10, which is positive 10, and add it to negative 3, I get 7. And finally, to finish off the second, or the first row rather, I'm just going to take row 1, and because I want a 1 where the, that blue 2 is, I'm simply going to take row 1 and divide it by 2. So, 2 divided by 1 is this 1 right here. 
And 0 divided by 2 is still 0. But when I take 7 divided by 2, I can just keep that as a fraction as 7 halves. Now this first row is telling me that x equals 7 halves. So I can write this as a coordinate pair or ordered pair as 7 halves and negative 10. The last thing I'm going to do with this problem is just to check. So remember I have x over 2 plus y over 4. This should equal negative 3 fourths. But I now say that x and y are values that I know where the x is 7 halves and the y is a negative 10. Alright, so using the calculators you could combine these. I don't have a calculator on me, so I'm just going to solve these freehand. So I got this 2 times 2 gives me a 7 fourths. And I'll just make that a minus 10 fourths. This needs to equal negative 3 fourths. 7 minus 10 is a negative 3. Because we have common denominators, we can combine these two fractions. Negative 3 fourths does equal negative 3 fourths is a true statement. So we know that this first equation checks off. In the second equation, uh, we're going to replace x with 7 halves and the y with a negative 10. And we want to make sure that this also is a true statement. So 7 halves remains, but 3 fourths times negative 10. That gives me 7 halves minus 15 halves equals negative 4. And then, since we have common denominators, we can combine these. That's a negative 8 halves equals negative 4. And negative 8 divided by 2 is a negative 4. And negative 4 does equal negative 4 is a true statement. So as it turns out, the second equation also checks off. Now we can know for certainty that our answer is correct.